This is my 55th trip to Cocos Island, and this is a very special trip because, because we're going out to the seamounts. Okay, so this expedition to the seamounts, we have a team that's, you know, an incredible team of researchers, and uh, some of the main players right here are the drone drivers. This expedition was one where we tried to deploy our robotic submarine to do something very different. We were attempting to go down to 200 meters with a very small portable ROV, remotely operated vehicle, that we brought on the airplane. And what we would do is we would go out to where the shark receiver was moored, uh, basically set on the bottom with a recovery rope. And we, the, the goal was to go down, videotape it on the seafloor, make sure it was in a good location. So all of these contribute to a body of knowledge that's going to allow us to be successful next time. So while we were able to prove we could go that deep, while the video works, the remotely operated submarine works, we, at, alas, were not successful in our primary mission of being able to go down, film the receiver on the seafloor, and release it. Y el objetivo de esta expedición era recuperar los receptores acústicos que teníamos instalados en las gemelas e instalar otros receptores acústicos en las gemelas y en West Cocos, que son dos picos submarinos cercanos a la isla del Coco, que son muy importantes para especies pelágicas, en especial para el tiburón martillo. Yeah, so this has been an amazing experience and incredibly eye-opening. I have learned so much. Um, I'm so inspired by Randall and by all of the scientists that I'm meeting here. And, um, and there's really nothing like seeing these creatures firsthand to just make you care. Uh, you can know the statistics. You can know about these things, uh, sort of, you know, read about them. But there's really nothing like seeing the work in action and being underwater and, you know, seeing sharks with my own eyes uh, to just sort of make it all come together and become something really real and to make you care. The last seven days have been so cool, right? Like we have this amazing boat full of people that have all kinds of uh, different backgrounds. Like we have drone people, we have bull shark people, we have manta people, we have like all these tech people and just people that love to dive. And it was my first time seeing scalloped hammerheads. So that was like a total, just a really special moment for me because it's a species we may not have that much longer. So it's really cool that we got to come out here. We have, what, five different countries, Canada, Mexico, Costa Rica, US. I think I'm forgetting someone. But I think it's really cool that we have all these different people together, all excited about the same idea. Vamos a intentar bajar los quesos. Eh, la logística ya sería primero bajar los quesos, que es la línea que va a sostener el receptor, con una cuerda lo suficientemente larga por donde va a bajar el dron que tiene que seguir el punto exacto para lograr ver si en el fondo va a quedar bien un clavo. También hacer una prueba de lo bollante del queso, si no queda demasiado flotante para poder eh, utilizarlo y que quede anclado en el fondo. So when we arrived to the um, locations, the seamounts, the weather conditions had picked up. There was uh, a lot of wind, big swells, and the currents were, were a little stronger than we anticipated. And so deploying the receivers proved challenging. These are, um, again, small areas uh, coming, you know, uh, seamounts coming up from, say, 3,000 meters up to two, 200 meters with a very small surface area to hit and so by the time we would deploy the receivers they would miss the target they would get in the current and they would drift. Well we have two buoys on the anchor apparently the two buoys are making it float and it's being dragged by the current so we're gonna have to pull it up and only install one buoy on it so we're gonna get busy on that. So it was very challenging to get the receivers to, to hit that small area. And then once we did, we discovered that when we would put the ROV, we'd fly up to it and grab onto the um, drop line. And as we would descend, that additional drag of the vehicle would actually be enough to lift those weights, the anchors that the receivers are attached to, off the, um, the, the tops of these seamounts, and they would just kind of drift off. And so um, quickly we realized that we weren't going to be able to use the ROV and, and 
in that manner to, to be sent down and release them. Ok, marcamos el sitio para verificar si efectivamente el anclaje está fondeado. Si no logramos llegar al fondo, la corriente y el viento nos va a mover junto con apoyos. Ok, estamos tratando de comunicarnos con el receptor que acabamos de poner para que nos diga qué profundidad está. Ya lo habíamos detectado, pero lo perdimos. Entonces, como nos estábamos moviendo y tal vez el ruido del barco está interfiriendo, así que vamos a empezar de nuevo. Ya tiramos el ancla, pero acabamos de revisar con el BR-100 que se comunica con el receptor y el receptor está a, 300, a más de 300 metros de hondo y el punto que estamos buscando está como a 100. Sí, ahora pues se está complicando el asunto, pero eh, por, por dicha tenemos aquí un buen capitán, tenemos buenos ingenieros y, y estamos viendo a ver, porque sí, definitivamente el receptor queda en un lugar demasiado profundo, entonces necesitamos subirlo a un lugar más somero. Eh, está complicado el asunto, hay más corriente del que pensamos, pero, pero ahí vamos, vamos a seguir y vamos, a, vamos por el éxito, vamos a ver cómo sale esto. También trajimos un equipo de, de drones submarinos, sin embargo el submarino no pudo bajar, por lo que tuvimos que modificar la manera en la que íbamos a instalar estos submarinos. También queríamos tomar videos y evidencia del fondo marino para estar seguros de que los receptores quedaran bien instalados y para eso necesitábamos el submarino, sin embargo no se pudo. Pero la buena noticia fue que estos receptores tienen un sensor de profundidad, entonces al momento de instalarlos nos pudimos dar cuenta de que quedaron en una de las cúspides de estos montes submarinos a 190 y a 200 metros, entonces dentro de todo creo que quedó bastante bien. Ahora lo que se quiere es entender un poco mejor qué sucede en este, en, 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 entre estos dos puntos en medio. Se sabe que están los tiburones en Isla del Coco y se mueven a Galápagos o viceversa, pero lo que se quiere es entender muchísimo mejor qué es lo que ocurre en el medio, ¿no? entre punto A y punto B. Se tuvo que recurrir a, a medidas extremas, se ideó otro plan para poder eh, instalar los receptores, se corrió el riesgo de que se pudieran perder o pudieran haber quedado mal colocados, entonces lo que se hizo fue colocar un, un peso más, un ancla más, para que el, eh, los receptores tuvieran más peso y se pudieran ir a plan, porque la corriente nos estaba dando un poco de problemas, se llevaba el receptor hacia, hacia otros lados. I feel good about it. I felt good about this decision just because uh, me and my buddy Juan, we had a discussion with the captain. And the captain of the boat who was trying to find these flat 200 meter locations, he communicated that he knew, that he knew exactly where to go and how to do it. And so it was a lot of his plan. And so I felt very confident about it. I had to convince Randall a little bit just because it's a $4,500 receiver, I get, you know, I get all that, but um, at the end of the day, we all collaborated as a team, and we got it done. Oh, it's been amazing. It's, uh, it's really great seeing and meeting so many people that are so successful within their own fields, and then finding out how they work, and what they do, and how I can learn from them, and put it all together in our, in our projects that we're doing on manta rays. Um, but it's been amazing. There's so many uh, fantastic people on this trip. It's been really cool. Esta última semana ha sido bastante provechosa con un equipo super bueno. Acá es donde podemos empezar a ver un poco que no solo los biólogos son los que tienen el poder o la definición de poder trabajar con lo que son las especies, sino que todo lo que nosotros hacemos desde donde nosotros trabajemos tenemos ese deber de trabajar por el medio ambiente. Podemos ver donde un equipo multidisciplinario se incorpora y se une para hacer un bien en común, que sería la protección de, del océano. How can we communicate this with the people who are landlocked, with people who don't really have access to the ocean? Because we know this because, you know, we're all scientists. We know that, you know, if the ocean cannot provide the ecosystem services we need, like food security, it's going to have a huge impact. But how do we communicate this to people that are not that related to the ocean because it's going to hurt them as well. And that's where the storytelling comes, where we can you know, actually transmit that information to people who are not living on the ocean or by its side, but just to communicate to them and to make them become aware that this is a global issue. We all depend on the ocean. 
And, you know, people get it more when we talk about global warming because, you know, they can see how it's raining more, it's raining less, it's getting hotter. That affects them more directly. But then when we tell them that global warming is directly attached to sharks, you know, if we want our shark, if we want our oceans to be resilient, you know, to, to adapt to the, to the changes that are coming with climate change, we need the sharks there. And if we don't have the sharks and the ocean cannot adapt, that's going to hurt everyone in the world. And the difficult thing there is communicating that, getting the story straight and getting these people to get it, that this is a global issue and it's not just going to hurt people who fish or people who live on the beach. This is going to affect everybody, you know, no matter where you live, even if you're living on the summit of Mount Everest, you're going to be impacted if the sharks have no more sharks.